somebody, I think most people feel like the, the and I know as a bail bondsman and the president of the Ohio Professional Bail Bond Association, I do believe that there, every industry needs some type of reform. I mean, things have changed, times have changed, um, but this is just simply, I, I don't know, it reminds me of the black codes. Does real bail reform look like? And we're working on legislation ourselves. Um, it should be probably the next month or two, it should kind of pop up and start circulating around. Real bail reform should have a bail schedule where it should be common sense. Um, where, you know, no matter what county you're in, in the 88 counties in Ohio, if you get a charge, it's based on the schedule. It's a bail schedule guide where the judge has a discretion and it still gives the judge full discretion, but the, the bond can't exceed over a certain amount. Um, the bond or, and also uh, we believe um, that they should enforce rule 46 where people with minor misdemeanors, as long as they're, they're victimless crimes, traffic crimes, should never get arrested in the first place. Agreed. Um, I, it, it, the big issue uh, when it comes to uh, Democrats and Republicans, this is a Republican uh, piece of legislation. Uh, and one of the things the Republicans do really well is they know how to market and package and brand really well. The Democrats, you would have thought they caught on to that because they were able to do Obama as the first uh, social media president. But apparently they didn't because the Republicans took uh, what Trump did and maximized on it. And they can package and sell anything to the American people. And this bill right here, uh, as you just said, I mean, it's being packaged and marketed as true bell reform. And it's not reforming anything at all whatsoever. But uh, it was uh, introduced literally a month ago today on May 18th. And right now it has made its way into a uh, committee, into uh, the Judiciary uh, Committee. And it, it probably will uh, make its way through the proper channels very fastly. But can uh, you talk uh, to us uh, and explain to us right now what we could do to sort of stand with the bell bondsman uh, community to bring about not only real true reform, I know you're working on legislation, but uh, how we can do something to uh, counter uh, them pushing us through. We can have real conversations with our representatives. Um, I, I, I think um, they can always call their local bail bondsman and have a conversation. A lot of people don't understand the rights they're giving away. Um, this bill talks about, and it sounds great. Think about it. Instead of getting bail, you could just get an ankle monitor. I don't know about you, but if, 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 if there's never no job I've ever been at work, um, I could get arrested on Saturday and walk into my in the office on Monday um, without getting strange looks or even keep my job with an ankle monitor on. Right. Um, there's no job for the average hardworking American who works overtime or, you know, um, eight to eight to 12 hours a day where you say, hey, boss. You know, I needed an hour out of the day so I can charge up my ankle monitor or I need an hour, a, a two hour block out of the week so I can go to pretrial services. It's I mean, it's an invasive. You know, when you wear that ankle monitor, it's a it's a scarlet letter. I mean, that is guilty, um, especially being a brown person. If you're a minority in a situation, um, if you're a, if you're a brown person or if you have any hints of ethnicity, um, you know, it's 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 going to work against you. And people believe that, you know, and, and I was an at will state. So when you show up to, to work with this ankle monitor, be surprised if you don't lose your job. I mean, it's, 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 I, I believe it's going to happen. I mean, you know, I walk into a, a, the mall with an ankle monitor and somebody's going to be like, this guy's a criminal. Let's watch him. Um, it's just, you know, no matter what he did. Um, and then they're going to use that information. Nobody's talking about the information they're going to use, how they're going to use it, how they're going to start tracking, you know, us or, or just people in general. Um, and then there's another component. This is being pushed by the um, Buckeye Institute, um, heavily by the Buckeye Institute. And, you know, if anybody does the well, research, uh, first off, what is uh, the Buckeye Institute? But they're a political activist kind of organization. Um, they kind of push different agendas based on I, I, I don't know why they decided bell reform, but they usually just push different uh, political agendas um, and try to to. Um, and I'm assuming typically conservative political. Uh... Oh, yeah. Uh, well, no, they're pretty radical at times, too. Um, but, you know, the, the thing is, there, there is a conspiracy here. I mean, they are 
um, funded by the Koch brothers who own uh, Georgia Pacific. Georgia Pacific has um, interest in um, toilet paper, toilet uh, papers. Um, under this bill, where they again, you don't have uh, with this bill, they don't have to give you a right to bail. They can decide to hold you. Generally, if you're black and brown in these smaller counties where we're not representative, representative, I fair, they're going to hold us. They're going to say, hey, you could get the max, or you could do these two or three years in prison, and and um, you know, you get the max of thirty years, or you could do a two, three years, whatever it be. And so, more of us are going to go straight to prison, and yeah, less of us will go to jail, but more go straight to prison, um, and then. Where, where, I, where Georgia Pacific uh, or the, the, the Buckeye Institute uh, fits in, again, they're, they're financially backed. And you can look this up. It's online. About 67% of their proceeds come from the Koch brothers. Um, and, well, if they own Georgia Pacific and they sell toiletries, well, anybody who's been to prison or been in jail, the average uh, inmate is allotted two to three rolls of toilet paper um, every week. So, you, you know, are, are they pushing this legislation to make money? Are they pushing this to, 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 to really do good? Um, is, uh, you know, that's, you, you know, that's something that you know, I think people need to look into and use their good common sense. All right. So something we probably should have done a little earlier. Could you explain to everybody what a bell bondsman is? Bell bondsmen, we, um, we're, we're secured bail. That's what we do. What we do is simply um, work with the family, the, the defendant, the indemnitors, the family, and um, we put up the, uh, you sign a, in short, it's like paying a loan. We put up a, a promise to pay, showing that you're going to show up to judge court, and you pay us the 10%, and we can finance that for you. Most people we do understand can't afford that. And we can take as low as 1% down, um, but we'll put you on a uh, promise to pay for the remainder of the payments. But we put uh, securities to secure that you're going to make it to your court appearances. Um, and that's what we do. Um, we work with the family because we actually, unlike the, unlike the court, to make sure that there's a success plan. Whether you, if you if people have drug problems, theft problems, anchor management, where they get the resources so they can navigate the system, so we can ensure that they make it to their court date and get the best outcome they can possibly get. On the county level, could we do something to bring about change when it comes to bail reform? Working with our Franklin County commissioners to put legislation and pass laws uh, on the county level. Re reinforce the uh, Rule 46 and simply make a, some, a lot of things citable offenses. I, as a bondsman, and every bondsman will tell you the same, we don't want to bond out people who have um, traffic, minor traffic offenses, jaywalking tickets. It's stupid. They should never be arrested. It's a waste of taxpayers' money. It's a waste of their money. It's criminalized a person who's not a criminal. Um, so I, I think they can do that. And number one, a bail schedule, even a, a, a countywide bail schedule, um, a bill schedule guide. I'm going to say that it's not a, it, it doesn't direct them to what the bond is, but it gives them a guide or what it could be or should be. Um, make things just a lot easier, um, especially if you're, if you're not a threat. There are people who are not a threat. And a lot of times there are people who get higher bonds just simply because, you know, judges make the, you know, I don't have a guide. Mm -hmm. And also, I believe everybody, everybody, you know, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is uh, criminal justice reform. They should have a status hearing after you have your appearance, uh, get your appearance and have your arraignment and a bond is set or uh, a bond is set. Um, you should in a seven to 10 days, you should have a status hearing where your defense works with the prosecution and says, hey, you know, this person's rights were violated. This doesn't, you know, this doesn't meet this guidelines. And Certain cases, a lot of cases, I feel, would fall out the system, and it would stop burdening down the system. I mean, public defenders, uh, prosecutors, the whole system is, is archaic, and they're overworked. Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, they are. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, you know, you're welcome to, uh, on the show anytime uh, okay. here uh, on the Unbought and Unbossed show. Uh, for today, that's uh, the more you know uh, about the cash bail system uh, and the race's uh, attempt at uh, reform making its way through uh, the state house. Uh, we're back right after this.
I am so thankful for StreamYard. I love StreamYard. I'm thankful for StreamYard. I love StreamYard. I am super thankful for StreamYard.